Hello and welcome, I'm Pooja Sarkar and you're watching Capital Ideas, our latest podcast from Forbes India. Now we can't stress enough but do please like, subscribe and follow us, go to our YouTube page, like us and if you want to only hear us, please go to Spotify and any other podcasting platform that you prefer. Now, today we are going to move away from the world of business and finance and speak to two directors about their documentary Kiss the Ground, which is streaming on Netflix these days. Now, climate is at the heart of every discussion these days, and this documentary especially talks about how we can regenerate soil for a better earth in simple ways. Now, the documentary has been directed by Joshua Tickle and Rebecca Harold Tickle and narrated by Woody Harrelson. Now, who doesn't know these people? Now, let's go back to them and just quickly ask, when did you really start researching on this subject and why soil? actually working on this really before our first film. Uh, I had a van called the Veggie Van, which ran on vegetable oil. It was very popular in the United States. And it led us to make our first film together, Fuel, which was about how to make fuel from organic material, from used cooking oil. That led us to look at a lot of farms. And the more we looked at farms, the more we realized we have a farming crisis in America and in many parts of the world. And we wanted to find a way to fix that farming crisis. And it just so happens that we found it in Kiss the Ground. Okay. And uh, do you have to add anything, Rebecca, on it? Well, I think Josh's story is really unique because he grew up in a part of the United States um, in Louisiana that's known as Cancer Alley, where there's 150 petrochemical facilities that are processing the oil that's flowing through there every day. And his family um, were very affected by that. And many of them got sick. And that put him on the path to create the veggie van and create an oil used from a waste stream, which was fast food frying oil. And I just thought that that was so powerful that this person who had come from this very unique circumstance had then gone on this mission to find a solution. And ultimately that solution led us to this. And I remember I I saw him with the veggie van parked in his backyard. I was in my early twenties and I was like, sign me up. And that was 13 (laughs) years ago, 14 environmental documentaries ago, two children ago, (laughs) and here we are. And as far as we're concerned, this is definitely the most important thing that we can be doing for our two young children who've grown up inside of the conversation of kiss the ground and regeneration. That is quite wonderful. Uh, Just getting into the fact, you know, I think almost everyone will agree when Woody Harrelson says in the beginning of the documentary, he just goes on and he says that we're all losing hope. I mean, there's a data dump on how bad our climate situation is, but not only the answers, we always come up with, oh, this is the problem, this is the problem, this is the problem. But your documentary tries and deals and gives an answer in a very simple way. So could you tell the listeners what is it that is all about? Well, we know that India is a big agricultural country, and this movie is all about agriculture. So it is about taking the carbon that is in the atmosphere and drawing it down and storing it into soil. What most people don't realize is one of the main ingredients in soil is carbon. So when soil is rich in carbon, it's very black. That's what you're seeing. That's the color difference. When soil is bereft of carbon or it doesn't have much carbon in it, It gets browner and browner and browner until it becomes really like sand. So what we want to do is enrich soil by drawing down carbon. And when we do that, the soil gets richer, the plants get richer, the animals get richer, and ultimately our bodies get healthier. And that's really what the movie is about. It's a formula for how to do this in any agricultural region anywhere in the world. And ultimately, the farms will make a profit. It'll it'll enrich not just the soil, but also the farmers who are using these practices and their communities as well. True. Uh, I mean, I was going to the documentary and I realized where where Gabe Brown talked, the rancher, he talks about and explains the regeneration process that is repair the damage that we have done to the soil. But how does one go about it? If we can explain in simple ways, because I saw the process that he showed with his truck that, you know, we are not tilling the ground, but we're just going up above the surface and trying to get water to go inside the soil. And, you know, when did you really start looking at these regenerative ideas? How did you start researching on these? Well, the regeneration, the idea of regeneration is the basis for all ecology. Ecology works from 
regeneration. So if you, if you pull a leaf from a tree, it grows another leaf. If, you, if a, t a lizard loses its tail, it grows another tail. And in the same way, you know, the deserts that we have, many of the man-made deserts around the world, they still have the ecological memory to come back as forests. It's in the soil, it's in the microbes, it's actually in the actual microbial life in the soil itself. So how do we do that on a small scale? How do we do that in a, in a farm that may be a hectare or half a hectare or a quarter of a hectare? Very much the same way. We don't till the soil, so that's the number one thing, no tilling of the soil. Planting directly into the soil, using animals to go over the ground to disturb it just a little bit, but add fertilizer. Planting cover crops, so planting a crop in between the main crop, planting something that pulls in nitrogen like alfalfa or beans, something that pulls in that nitrogen that the animals can eat, and then harvesting the crop, and then bringing the animals back. So it's this cycling without ripping up the soil that really builds the top layer of the soil, and that's the rich layer that's going to give us the nutrients that we need for health. True. And coming to the fact that, you know, you have a bunch of very famous actors who are part of the documentary. What are the reasons of getting these people? For example, you have Giselle Bunchen, you have, you have a, like a whole bunch of people who are there who are trying to talk about their farm. Uh, why, why did you think that, you know, you should have these famous faces in your documentary? You know, I think people come to this conversation from different, for different reasons. So the reason we have a lot of farmers coming to this conversation is because they're looking to increase the longevity and the profits of their farm. We have soil scientists coming to this conversation because they're looking at how to preserve the climate and how to draw down carbon. But really the celebrities that came to this conversation were really practicing these things in their everyday life. Um, you know, Woody, he's been a lifelong environmentalist. We've known him through biodiesel for decades. Every time his veggie van would break down, you know, he'd call up Josh's cell and find out how they could get the fuel pump working again or whatever it was that had broken down at that time. So he's always been looking for a real viable solution for how we can live in harmony with nature. Um, Giselle Bündchen, same thing. She loves regeneration. Tom Brady, her husband's a football player, and he's constantly beating up his body. And so they eat a regenerative diet because it's how he's able to keep going in there and getting physically abused is to regenerate his body through this nutrient-dense food. Um, and then people like um, Jason Mraz, he's actually a farmer. You know, he he quit singing there for a minute to go. He's this amazing, you know, Grammy award winning, incredible musician. He quit music 10 years ago to go and create a regenerative avocado farm that also grows coffee beans and all kinds of other things. Um, so everyone that's in the film came to this, I guess you could say organically or <laughs> regeneratively, so to speak, um, because these were all issues that they were passionate about. Um, and how wonderful to have people like them interspersed with others who are actually practicing these techniques um, to help take a soil, an issue like soil dirt, which is, you know, pretty boring, so to speak, and um, make it exciting, make it entertaining, and also learn something while we're at it. There's a thing about your documentary, you, mean, you talk about that these are very simple things that everyone can do. We don't really have to look at bigger policies, but these are things that we can start at, on our, at, a, at a very ground level. What is the reason that you took this approach? Because usually most documentaries either land up the fact that, you know, oh, governments need to do this. Of course, we need, do need policies, but your documentary clearly says that, oh, let's start simple. Let's start at our own home. Well, let's think about, you know, your country, India, you've got 1.4 billion people, you probably have a very high percentage compared to the US of people involved in agriculture. So when we look at where is the biggest change that we can make the fastest, the soil is the power. The soil is the power to reverse climate change. The soil is the power to make us healthier. Certainly now during 2020 with the coronavirus, this is a year in which everyone's talking about health. How do we get healthier? How do, how do we be more resistant? to disease and to viruses. Well, better nutrition. Where does nutrition come from? The soil. So where can we make a difference? We can make a difference with the one thing that we all interact with on some level, which is plants and the soil. Whether you live in an apartment and you can only do a small planter box, or you have a backyard, or you're a little farmer, 
Those are places where you can make a difference. That's what we wanted the message to be. Yes, governments should get involved. They absolutely should. But it is the power of the people that will change the tide ultimately. Sure. And uh, are you doing any projects in India? Are you looking at any projects in India tying up here and trying to do something here? Because this documentary was more or less a lot focused on America. But are you looking to be here? Yes, we're actually looking at uh, doing an India tour with oh. the movie. And we have a TV series coming. Uh, and we're going to be filming that all over the world. And of course, we'd love to film some of that in India. So we're just waiting on the you know coronavirus to be done or at least to a place where we can travel again with our children and then we look forward to coming to your beautiful country and working with you as well great and any other projects that you've already started working after this or you're still busy with this movie well we made four movies about oil though we reserve the right to continue making films and series on this subject you know and i i was thinking about your question about like why did we make this about things that people can actually do and sort of instead of sort of this tangential um, information-based doc. And I think the reason is because our soil has the ability to not only stabilize our climate, but it also has the ability to feed people. It has the ability to stabilize local environments. That means, you know, often when we start growing food, you'll see desertification. You'll see that healthy soil dry up die become sand basically and what happens is it pushes away the rain so i'm sure in india where there have been conventional agricultural practices in play um, you know when you have genetically modified seed genetically modified plants they're planted in rows they're isolated from other plants they're isolated from nature that's not how we're designed to grow our food and when we switch up this model and we make our food grown in a way that is messy and chaotic, like life, like nature is designed, you know, instead of having a single row of soy, we could have a messy food forest that provides all different types of biodiverse abundance and products and profit. Um, I think this is the single most actionable thing that people can do to not only save the planet, but also within their communities, create thriving communities. And it's largely ignored. People are only looking at reducing emissions. But what they don't realize is if you want to jumpstart the small water cycle, if you want to see an abundance in the economy within your community begin to thrive, if you want to see people's health and well-being um, begin to flourish, and then of course, if as a farmer, you're looking to make a profit, you know, within seven years, you can start to see all of those things begin to happen. And so even though this idea has been around for a while, truly the benefits of it are breakthrough for everyone. Sure. Uh, before I let you go, one last question, because you both mentioned about this fact that, you know, farmers can benefit and actually make profits uh, by applying regenerative process. But because at the end of the day, everybody has the same question. Will I be able to make enough money uh, for my produce? How do you define, I mean, in the sense that you've spoken to so many people and were there also in the documentary, uh, how much can profits be similar to what, to what you do in your normal business or is it higher, lower? How is it? I think we have to look at what type of agriculture we're talking about. There's mass production agriculture, which as Rebecca mentioned, is sort of producing a large quantity of something, whether that's rice or soy, one of these big commodities, wheat. And then there's, there's more what we would call the small farmers of the world that actually produce the majority of the food we eat is actually on small farms. So with the large conventional agriculture, those farmers, they're generally very poorly paid. They're generally losing money. They're generally in a bad position. This can make the biggest difference for large scale agriculture. But this is the easiest to implement on small farms. So in terms of profitability, what this method of agriculture does is it stabilizes the farm. So as the farm loses topsoil, you lose the ability to grow. You have to work harder. As you build topsoil, you increase the ability to grow. You don't have to work as hard. And that's what we want to see. We want to see more growth from less land. And with small farmers, you can produce more. So logically, if you're producing more, you can sell more. And that's what we want to see for the small farmer is better income, better livelihood, better soil. 
agree. And now that the movie is on Netflix, everyone can go and watch it on Netflix. And uh, we really hope to see you soon in India and uh, really hope to see new projects that you guys are doing. Can't wait. Thank you, Look Pusha. forward to it. Great to meet Thank you. you. Thank you so much. Take care. Goodbye. Goodbye. Thank you.